Welcome to another episode of Why I Didn't, the mostly useless series where I tell you why I did not pursue a particular specialty. And in this episode, we're covering pathology. If you want something more objective and useful and comprehensive, then go check out So You Want to Be a Pathologist on the Med School Insider channel, where we work with one to three experts in a given field, talk about the whole thing A to Z, comprehensive overview, unbiased, not really my opinion, just the straight facts. This Why I Didn't series is the opposite. This is me just talking about my experience, and for that reason, you should take it all with a massive boulder of salt. And if you want some sweet merch or some exclusive discounts on Med School Insider services and courses, then you should become a YouTube channel member. Click that join button down below. And we're also doing a monthly live stream AMA where I drink some whiskey. This is tea right here, but I drink some whiskey, get a little bit inebriated, unfiltered, and answer your questions. It's a lot of fun. Let's start with what I liked about pathology. So first, let me say that pathology was never even remotely on my radar, but after doing this So You Wanna Be episode on the Med School Insider channel, I do feel like it is massively underrated as a specialty. And again, if you want more details as to why it's underrated, things like anatomic pathology, which is what we normally think of versus clinical pathology, we explain all that and much more there. The first thing I like is that there's no clinic. And you're gonna see a common theme here on the Why I Didn't series. Oftentimes, one of the first points for a specialty is no clinic, and that's because there are two types of people in medicine. You got the people that like clinic, and you have people like me who don't like clinic. Pathology has no clinic at all, which is pretty awesome. There are only a few other specialties that give you that same level of glory. Those other ones being radiology, emergency medicine, anesthesiology. I mean, for the most part, you could subspecialize or have a practice within those that does have clinic. But for the most part, no clinic in those specialties and no clinic with pathology either. And even surgery, which is definitely lighter on clinic, most surgical specialties do have clinic. In plastic surgery, for example, you have pre-op planning with the patient. Then you have post-op management and follow-up. And most non-surgical but medical specialties have much more clinic as well. Number two, no patient shenanigans. Look, in any specialty, you're gonna have some really pleasant, some really awesome patients for the most part, but then also some occasional difficult patients. And the cool thing about pathology is that the slides are never gonna be pissed at you. They're never gonna exhibit drug-seeking behavior. It's just all good. With pathology, you actually end up interacting more so with colleagues rather than patients. Number three is solving puzzles. If you love the puzzle aspect of medicine where you have to figure out what the mystery is for a specific case, then pathology has you covered. And I personally like that. I think it's dope. You're still helping patients, but it is much more indirect. You still have meaning and purpose to your role as a pathologist, but it's more through the lens of this medical detective work instead. And there's a certain simplicity here that I think goes underappreciated because humans are complex creatures, right? And even in the best lifestyle specialties, you're gonna get the occasional challenging or frustrating patient. That's just the way things are. So while the downside is that you don't get the highs of patient interaction and pathology, the upside is that you don't get the lows either. Number four is diagnosis over management. Because of the nature of pathology, you're really focused much more on the diagnosis and figuring out what's going on rather than the management afterwards. Now, when I think back to med school, I loved my preclinical years and my surgical rotations. Those are like the two highlights. And part of that, when I think back, is probably because in the preclinical years, you have way more control over your schedule and flexibility, a couple hours of class per day, and then a lot of free time to just study and do what you gotta do. And good memories like playing water pong or ping pong and study breaks with my friends, or bumping Kanye West in the anatomy lab, studying late at night. Yay is in the building, <laughs> Just good times. But part of the reason was also this really deep, intense focus on understanding pathology and pathophysiology and just the human body. And pathology really lends itself well to the same area of focus, the same specialization. So for example, if you don't understand how a hormone can influence the endometrium in a woman, then you know you might actually miss a diagnosis. So the key thing here is that if you really enjoyed your first two years of medical school, those preclinical years, then pathology, you know, it could be a good fit. Number five is being the bridge. As a pathologist, you are the bridge between basic sciences and clinical application. You're like the trunk of the tree between the roots and the branches. You'll need to understand the diseases clinical presentation and how it affects patients. But then on the other side, also understand the cellular and molecular manifestations. So when a patient comes in with a mass and radiology is able to give a differential, but they're unable to diagnose, you then get a biopsy. And as the pathologist, you're now reviewing that biopsy and you're gonna be the one to determine whether that is a benign or malignant tumor. And the final point, is a cush residency. So residency is either three or four years depending on which program you attend. And this may not seem like a big deal because hey, 
four years of your life versus like six years for a surgical specialty as an example. But remember, when you're in your late 20s, those are your prime years, so it kind of is a big deal. At least I'm now appreciating it more now that I'm in my early 30s. Yeah, if I had actually stuck with plastic surgery, I would be in my final year right now, and I would be graduating in June of 2023. That's wild. But for pathology, I do hear that residency is much more chill, regular hours, nine to five, 40 to 50 hours per week, which as far as residencies go, that's super cush. Now, what I did not like about pathology, the first point is that it's not colorblind friendly. I hated histology and pathology in my preclinical years. And a big part of that is because I'm colorblind, specifically red green. And the type of red green is actually, I'm a strong protonope. And what that means is the red cones in my eyes, they're present, but they're dysfunctional. So then when I'm looking at the slides, differentiating between the hues that have red in them. So red looks a little bit desaturated to me. And when I wear my colorblind sunglasses, I'm like, whoa, red is such a beautiful color. Because I normally don't see it in that way. But differentiating between like the blue and magenta and purple and pink and all those other things, it was stressful, man. I still did well. I got good grades in my path and, and histo. But I remember having to put a lot of effort into it. I had to try really hard. I had to rely on like other visual cues uh, more so than just color. And even when I was looking at the color, I had to like really concentrate and look really hard to see, is there any hint of pink or purple or red here that I'm not initially seeing at first glance? Number two is there's no direct patient care. This is one of the biggest and just most obvious drawbacks to pathology. If you know that you're the type of person who enjoys patient interaction, and I was one of those people that did enjoy it. And even more so now, especially after the pandemic, I've realized how extroverted I am and how much I need that regular interaction with other people to feel happy and fulfilled. So the relative lack of interaction, or I shouldn't say lack because you are still interacting with the physicians and the surgeons who are doing the biopsy. You need to understand why are they doing the biopsy and then what are they hoping to, to gain from it, right? So there is some interaction, but it's definitely much less than most other specialties. That's also why you tend to see much more introverted personalities on average going into pathology. And this is the point where someone of course comments that they know some super extroverted comedian that became a pathologist or whatever, but you know, pathologists are, are chill people. So I'm not even worried about offending any of them because they'll just be like, meh, whatever. Like pathologists, they're cool. But let me clarify, because if there's a spectrum with pathology, essentially zero patient interaction here and primary care having maybe almost like too much, or maybe, maybe it's the context of the patient interaction because primary care, I was not a fan of that because it requires too much patience, a lot of behavioral modification, counseling, you're doing diabetes management, you're doing medication and nutrition and sleep and uh, motivational interviewing. And then they come back three to six months later and there's no change. And that was just kind of frustrating. So the nice thing with PATH is that you don't have to deal with that. And I feel like for me, there's something in the middle, something like surgery where you have some patient interaction, but it's not quite that primary care, very intense focus on just patient interaction. Number three, you know what? It's kind of slow and boring. So on one hand, I do love my relaxed, calm, tranquil energy. I like airports on a Monday night when it's mostly empty. I like driving my car on windy roads at 3 a.m. on a Wednesday when it's just me. But I also need that occasional excitement. I need the, the burst of adrenaline. I'm, I'm somewhat of an adrenaline junkie. That's why I go to the racetrack 10 to 20 times a year to beat on my car and drift it and do all, all these other crazy shenanigans. And you can actually see that and more on my all new car YouTube channel called Jabal and Cars right here and also linked in the description below. So I do like the calm. I don't like the crazy frenzy, which is why emergency medicine actually isn't a good fit for me because it's like this constant state of like frantic, kind of uncomfortable energy. Oh, we got chest pain. Oh, we got abdominal pain. And then most of it is not actual emergencies. And then occasionally you get a spike of, oh, whoa, this is like something real's coming in. Let's handle that. Pathology is on the other end where you don't really have the high stakes adrenaline, like, oh my God, what's going on? Like you get that rush. Well, you, you actually kind of are making life and death decisions. You're just not doing it in a high pressure environment. It's not going to be as exciting and exhilarating. You know, making a life or death decision through a slide and, you know, taking your time is very different than running a code as an example. Number four is the bread and butter. Now every specialty has their bread and butter. This means the main things you're seeing day in and day out, the 80% that you're seeing most days, right? What are the cases, the presentations, the procedures, et cetera, that you're mostly doing. And when you're looking at a specialty, you want to make sure you're okay with the bread and butter. You don't want to focus on just the exciting zebras that you see just a couple percentage points of the time, because those are few and far between. And the bread and butter in pathology, my understanding is that it's very repetitive. It can be monotonous. Like you're measuring the margins on a breast cancer case, for instance. And I've heard that you can go several days 
without having anything that's really noteworthy or unique or different or challenging. And I don't really like that. Next up is the job market, which is quite competitive and quite challenging. I also hear that a lot of these larger corporations are employing a lot of pathologists, and that is actually resulting in less ideal working conditions. And because the job market's so challenging, a lot of people are saying that it's almost required that you now do a fellowship after residency. And some other specialties that have challenging job markets right now, the most obvious one is radonc, and then emergency medicine has also been trending in that direction. The other thing here is the concern of artificial intelligence, AI, displacing pathologists. Now, the weird thing here is when you raise this point, whether it's radiologists or pathologists with AI or anesthesiologists with CRNAs, they'll often retort that, oh, this is like not a problem. You'll always need a, you know, licensed board certified MD, which doesn't quite make sense because if you can use a technology like AI to make a single pathologist 10 times more efficient and effective, now the hospital no longer needs to employ 100 pathologists. Now they just need 10 because those 10 can do the same work as 100 of them. What hospital is employing 100 pathologists? You get, you get the point though. Essentially, if technology makes you much more efficient and effective, then you need fewer people doing that job. And then the last point is that pathologists are unsung heroes. There's very little appreciation for them, even though they do really important work. If you're the one who either diagnoses or rules out a cancer, guess what? You're not getting any thank you cards. You're not getting any of the credit. You're just behind the scenes. And for some people, that's totally fine. But for me, I like some of that glory. I like getting my ego stroked. And you know what, pathology, doesn't really offer that. In fact, sometimes people don't even think you're a physician. So overall, it comes down to three questions. First, how much do you enjoy seeing patients? Second, how much do you enjoy working with your hands? And third, how much did you enjoy the preclinical years of medical school versus the clinical years? All right, my friends, I hope you found that useful. If you enjoyed this video, then check out So You Want To Be A Pathologist or another video on my Why I Didn't playlist. Much love and I'll see you guys there.